So I knew what the topic was going to be tonight, but I had no idea what I wanted to talk about. And I told Nick, I said, look, just put me on the side, like tentative, and look over at me and I'll wink or, you know, I'll let you know how I feel. And then, before this got started, something came to mind and went, ah, that's what I'm going to talk about. That's not what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> You're worse than I am. I mean, are you kidding? I'm still making up my mind as I speak. <laughs> It's all good. This, but, you know, the, the reality is, I mean, we're no young chickens here, right? We've all had life experiences. Uh, the, the term golden nugget, except for you, Blaine, I'm sorry, I see you look a little disappointed. You're very young and inexperienced. <laughs> but the truth is, we've, we've all had lives, and you can't live a year. You can't live six months or three months. Sometimes in my life, I swear to God, a day without going up and down and, f and feeling like things are going to fall apart and then having that ecstasy of knowing, like that deep knowing inside that it is absolutely going to be fine. So, golden nuggets. God, there's, there's a million. I think of um, when I was 16 years old and my mom couldn't couldn't afford to take care of us. My sister bailed and said, I'll go live with dad in another state because I'm so, she could see it, you know, and I can feel it right now. Like I can remember that time. And what got me through then was a mantra, let go or let God. Like let go, let go, let go, shake it off because of everything that y'all have shared here today. You can't control the future. You can't do any, worry gets you nowhere. Right? Um, the past doesn't matter, and it doesn't when you're really freaking out. To heck with the past. You're worried about, like, right now. But, no. 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 <laughs> but you can only do so much. So let go and let God got me through my teen years, I would say. I'm just going to jump from golden nugget to golden nugget. <laughs> then there was a time in my life, ah, oh, I remember it well. I was working at the mall. Anybody here ever worked at the mall? Yeah! Do you know how many days the mall is open? A year? <laughs> it, I think it's only exceeded by the movies, which I also worked out. The movies are open 365 days a year. So there's never any time off, right? And so I was, you know, I was a college dropout. I had nothing to show for all the money Grandma put into it. I didn't know where I was going. And my mom, who worked at the bank, said, why not, why not be a teller? And I said, all right. Okay, like out by three, off on the weekends, bank insurance, bank holidays. So, yeah, let's do it. So off I went to be a teller, and, and I and I moved up just a smidge, you know. This, that part doesn't matter. What does matter is when this incredible opportunity came in front of me, and I had to go to this interview. And it was at it wasn't in the building, like they it was at somebody's personal house. So the the highest person in the retail banking environment, it was at her house on a river with a glass sheet of windows, you know, and I'm this little nobody is how I felt, right? This little 20 something year old trying to look good and hope that her heels don't flip flop as she's walking in because they don't fit right. And I'm sitting down for this big interview because it's my chance to break out, right? And all I could think of was fake it till you make it. Fake it. Fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> feel tall, feel big, and I, I sat in my car and I gave myself the little pep talk that I'm guessing a few of us have done here and there, and I just thought, I, I am who I am, and I can be exactly who I want to be. It's all inside, right? If we can just let go of the nerves and the, the stories, the old stories that we have for ourselves, the old stories that other people have for us, and just... If you're scared, just fake it till you make it. Because I guarantee you, as soon as you start faking it, you're there. Right? It's like stepping into your future. Right? Just be it. So that, that got me through my transformative years. And then I actually had a career, which was exciting. Right? I wasn't just a teller counting that money. I was a, a training professional, which lasted for 15 years. And bloomed and was wonderful and, and, and fabulous in many other ways. So we've got let go, let God, fake it till you make it. I recall very distinctly baby steps being another big golden nugget for me, and I could apply that to anything, right? Your heart is broken, you don't want to get out of bed. Um, 
things like, I don't know, your house was flooded for two weeks and it's destroyed and you don't know where you're going to live. Like, baby steps can be from anything really small to anything really, really big. And it's just about one foot at a time. And it kind of goes back to the now. And I'm now realizing all of the uh, synchronicities that we've got going on. But just being able to, to take the next step was a big deal for me a number of times. And then the last nugget that I will share um, happened almost two years ago, actually. Uh, I was married for about 11 years to my best friend, and he cooked me this awesome breakfast. He was the cook. I was the cleaner. I was the eater and the cleaner. <laughs> Great. It was like a frittata. I think we were on frittatas. We'd go through different phases, and it was some kind of frittata action. It was delicious, and we're sitting on our... You know, our, our new house with all the new furniture after the hurricane, that was the best part, was going shopping. Um, you know, everything's feeling good. It was a Saturday morning, and we're just kind of taking it all in. And then he sits down in front of me, and he starts shaking. And I, I can feel it in the pit of my stomach, so it's not right here. And then he said what I thought he was going to say, which was, I don't love you anymore. I want a divorce. And you're like, Why'd you yeah, he fed me well. <laughs> <laughs> He's lucky I didn't throw up on him. <laughs> but it would have. But it led me to so many wonderful things. And it's you know, side note, I wasn't devastated, which is kind of weird. Um, and it, and I'll tell you exactly why. Because I took a really deep breath and closed my eyes, and there was a voice inside that said, "Yeah, that's probably a good idea." wasn't that we didn't love each other. It just wasn't for us anymore. We were going down two different paths. And I, and I thought, yeah, okay. So it was that voice that made it okay for me to move forward, it made it okay for me to, for the next six months, think, what do I want? Like, I could be anything now. I'm not married. I don't have a house. I can, I'm footloose and fancy free. And it took me like, like six to eight months to figure it out. And, and in the end, long story wrapping up here now, Quit my job, you know, bought an RV, took, hit the road. A lot of you know this story. Just threw caution to the wind, and, and, and I just wanted to travel. I just wanted to play. I wanted a break. I didn't want the 70-hour work week anymore. I didn't want um, to be working on the weekend because I had no hobbies. He used to say, well, you need a hobby. Look, I don't, I don't have a hobby. So when I was bored on Saturday, I just thought I could work. I could get stuff done, so Monday's not as bad, which is pitiful, but that's what I did for a long time. So I just wanted to check out for a while, which is what I did. And in hindsight, when people started asking me, like, how, okay, how'd you do that? Like, how'd you make the leap? You know, some people use the term, feel the fear and do it anyway. That didn't really apply to me. Like, I was willing to barrel through anything. What was stopping me, and the, the last nugget I'll give you, is that too often we are constrained by everyone else's expectations. So I learned to shed the shoulds. You should be married happily. You should be upset when you're divorced. You should get up and you should keep that job because you've got health insurance. You should not touch your 401 to go you know, gallivanting across the country. You should take vitamins. You should drink eight ounces, uh, eight glasses of water a day. You should exercise 30 minutes five times a week. I could go on with all the shoulds. You should not eat chocolate for breakfast. I didn't, yeah, and you should not eat raw cookie dough. I don't know what that's about. So I finally shed the shoulds and uh, I said, you know, to heck with it all. And that is the last nugget. So I would say, shed your shoulds. When in doubt, shed your shoulds. Yeah!